ischemic heart disease accounts for 30% of male deaths in the Western world and 23% of female deaths in the Western world. The main cause of ischemic heart disease is atheroma of the coronary arteries. The main clinical outcomes of ischemic heart disease are stable angina, unstable angina, cardiac failure, myocardial infarction and of course sudden death. Acute ischemic heart disease occurs when there is thrombosis of atheromatous plaques in coronary arteries. 25% of cases are due to ulceration of endothelium overlying the plaque and 75% of cases are due to fissuring and bleeding into the plaque or thrombosis of the plaque. If the plaque was low grade, it may have caused no clinical symptoms at all before the damage occurred. This is a coronary artery narrowed by atheroma and thrombus has formed on top of the atheroma. The red area in this photograph is an area of bleeding into an atheromatous plaque. Unstable angina is caused by fissuring of atheromatous plaques. It may progress to myocardial infarction or death may occur from a ventricular arrhythmia. There are two main types of acute myocardial infarction. They are regional myocardial infarction and circumferential subendocardial myocardial infarction. In regional myocardial infarction, thrombus develops on a complicated atheromatous plaque in a coronary artery. There may be complete occlusion that can cause full thickness infarction or lysis of the thrombus may occur or a collateral blood supply may develop causing subendocardial infarction. This is an example of a regional full thickness myocardial infarct. You can see the boundary of the infarct by the zigzag brown line towards the right side of the picture. Circumferential subendocardial infarction occurs when there is severe stenosis of the three main coronary arteries. When there is an episode of hypotension, the blood supply cannot reach the subendocardial region causing infarction. The pale area in the subendocardial aspect of the left ventricle here is an example of scarring from a subendocardial myocardial infarct. Most myocardial infarcts occur in the left ventricle and septum. It is very rare for the right ventricle to be infarcted. Myocardial infarcts are invisible for up to 12 hours after infarction occurs. Between 12 and 24 hours the infarct appears pale and blotchy. One to three days later the infarct will appear pale or yellow and down the microscope will be an acute inflammatory infiltrate. In three to ten days time the infarct organises with inflamed granulation tissue and weeks to months later all that remains of the infarct is a collagenous scar. This photograph shows the yellow appearance of a recent myocardial infarct. And here is an acute inflammatory infiltrate in an area of recent infarction. The white tissue between the muscle fibres is fibrosis from an old myocardial infarct. Short term complications of myocardial infarction include death, usually due to ventricular fibrillation, dysrhythmias, left ventricular failure, rupture of an infarct, papillary muscle rupture or dysfunction causing mitral valve incompetence, mural thrombus may develop over the infarct and this may embolize. Finally, a common short term complication of myocardial infarction is acute pericarditis. Death from this patient who suffered from a myocardial infarct was rupture of the infarct. You can see the rupture as we 
pan in towards the apex of the left ventricle. In this heart there is an infarction of the papillary muscle that has been held by the forceps. This has ruptured causing catastrophic mitral valve incompetence and death. A large mural thrombus has developed over this myocardial infarct at the apex of the heart. The pale brown exudate on the external surface of this heart is an example of acute pericarditis. Long-term complications of myocardial infarction include recurrent myocardial infarction, chronic left ventricular failure, ventricular aneurysm, and rarely Dresler syndrome. This is an immune-mediated pericarditis that occurs 2 to 10 months after the infarct. This is an example of a ventricular aneurysm, a long-term complication of myocardial infarction.